I want everybody to read this book. I started my Sally Rooney journey. This book, I loved it so, so much. Hello guys. It's been a minute since I filmed a video. I know, I think I posted one like a couple days ago, so maybe for you guys it hasn't been that long, but I have not filmed a video in such a long time and I'm excited to be back. So last year I did reading wrap-ups pretty much every at the end of every single month but this year I decided to kind of switch it up and I'm gonna do a reading wrap-up like every three months I think. We'll just see what happens for the rest of the year. That's what we're doing today. I'm gonna show you guys all the books that I've read so far in 2022. It's about 30 books which I don't know how I did that because I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I did that. I've just been so into reading and I've had been having so much fun finding new books, asking friends for recommendations for books, and just exploring new genres, which I think you'll see a lot of that in what I'm showing you guys. If you've been watching my channel for a little bit, you would see last year I read a ton of romance and like fun, really lighthearted books, and now I'm going into a different era of my reading. I've been super into fantasy a little bit darker. You'll see. I'm gonna go in order of all the books that I've read. You can follow me on Goodreads. I always have my Goodreads linked down below if you want to have a real-time update of what I'm reading. Before I fully jump in, I want to show you guys what I'm reading currently. So we have a few things that I have going at the moment. First um, is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I am about halfway through this and honestly I really enjoy it but there's just something about classics that I just get bored with them. So I'm taking a bit of a break. I do have the audiobook version and I think I'll start listening to that. But this one, as good as it is, it's just not as good as some other books that I'm currently reading or have been reading. I'm just kind of putting it on the back burner for now, but still enjoying this. Then I am working on Crooked Kingdom. I love Lee Bardugo, which you guys will see in a second with everything else that I've read. I love Lee Bardugo so much. This book is pretty good and I have been hearing that it ends really sadly and I think that's why I'm taking such a slow time to get through it because I don't want anything bad to happen to these characters. I love them so much. I am also reading To Have and To Hoax. I recently joined a book club and we're going to be reading the second book in this series. Apparently the books don't actually like, you don't have to read them in order but me being me, like I just, I need to read books in order because I know I won't be able to enjoy the second one if I don't read the first one. So currently reading this, um, this one is about a couple, they got married after knowing each other for like five minutes and they've been married now for a few years, like five years. And for some reason, something happened in their first year of marriage and now they haven't really spoken in four years, even though they've been married and living in the same house. Um, and it takes place in like, what time period is it? This is like a Regency style book. It says people, if you're a fan of Bridgerton, this is a book that I think that you would really enjoy. I'm just about two chapters in, so pretty new to this book, but so far I'm liking it. I also got a Kindle, so that's something new that I've been doing this year. So we have a few books going on on here. I won't mention them too much because they're mostly like ARCs. I'm almost done with Time as a Mother by Ocean Vong, which is the poetry collection that is coming out next month, I think. I don't remember the exact date that it's coming out on, but it's really good. And I'm gonna try to finish that today. So that's the first book that I have read. Read. <laughs> I still have like just a small section left to finish, but I'm gonna count it because I'm filming this video today and I'm gonna finish it after I finish filming, if that makes sense. <laughs> all right, now that that's all out of the way, Let's get in to the books that I have completed because there's a lot of them and I'm so excited to talk about them all. I'm gonna plug my Instagram account at the Victorian underscore library. If you want to stay up to date with what I'm reading, I post pretty in-depth book reviews um, of everything that I read for the most part. Some books I don't review, but most of them I do. And that'll all be up on my Instagram. I got a nice cup of tea, which is the Beatrix Potter mix. I don't know what it is that's in this tea, but it is so good. This is what I read in January. First up, Daisy Jones and the Six. This is one of my top 10 books that, like, pretty much ever. I loved this book so, so much. 
Daisy Jones on the Six was the first book that I finished in January. I had been listening to the audiobook and then a couple months ago I went to go get the actual hard copy because I want to go through this and underline it and put little like and tab this book up. We got this band from the 60s or 70s, now I don't remember, one of them. Um, and it's just a story about how they all got together and then you find out why they broke up and the book is from all of their perspectives. It's an interview format which is super interesting. As an audiobook it worked so well and the audiobook is fantastic. I couldn't recommend it enough. So yes, this was a five star read for me and this was the first book that I read or read, <laughs> listened to in this year. Okay, next is a Kindle book. It's The Crowns of Croswald, which is the first book in the series. It's by D.E. Knight, and I am so grateful that the publisher reached out to me to send it, which was such a crazy moment for me. Uh, and it was such a good book. I loved that book so much, and the series. Like, the whole series is so cute, so wholesome. It's about this girl, Ivy. She is from her understanding, she is an orphan. She's been living far away from the main town and just working um, at this castle, basically, in the kitchens. Um, it's a fantasy book. It's a YA middle grade book. And there's just something so special about YA slash middle grade fantasy books. They're just so, they just make me feel so happy. And there's just something about that story that was just so wholesome. It's just the cutest book and something that I really needed. Just something so fun and light and just about like friendship and magic, but also there's a bit like there's some darkness to it. So it's not just all like cute and fun. It's got a little bit of spice, but not in that way. It's got some flavor to it. So it's very Harry Potter-esque, especially at the beginning. And I was like, ah, initially I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. I'm like, I love Harry Potter. So it's just like a copy of Harry Potter, but it's not. Once you get through like chapter three, there is still like the element of magic. And instead of wands, they have feathers. And it's such, it's very linked to academia and like learning how to use the feathers for magic and writing out spells and stuff like that. And the school that they go to, it's for royals and for the Scriveness, Scriveners, Scriveners? Something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it. So the Scriveners are the ones with the quills, the feathers, and then the royals, they have these fun crowns that'll transform them or that give them their power essentially. So fun and I just loved it so, so much. So next I read, reread Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I think I, this was like maybe my fourth time reading this book. I don't know. I love Harry Potter so much. My goal my intention in rereading this was to reread the entire series. My goal is to read one Harry Potter book a month. This is the only Harry Potter book I have so far read this year, but that's okay. There's still time in the rest of the year to finish the series again. Next, Red, White, and Royal Blue. I want to reread this book so badly. It's so cute and just so wholesome and I loved it so much. This book like made me laugh out loud. The dialogue between the characters are so witty and so fun and sarcastic with each other. It was fantastic and I gave this book a five star. My goal for 2022 when it came to reading was to expand my horizons instead of just reading like fun romance books like like this one. Although I absolutely loved it, I really wanted to try something new. So in January this book was released. It's The Maid by Nita Prose. And this book was really good. I've been really wanting to get into mystery, so I thought this was actually a really good introduction into mystery. I've definitely read mystery in the past, but not that much. And I really liked it. My main reason for hesitating to read mystery is because I don't like really dark and like creepy books. That's why I think this is such a good one, because it's a wholesome mystery in a way. Like it's a murder mystery book, so we have the murder element but it's very light. It's not dark and creepy. It's a very cozy mystery. That's how I describe it. Like this is a book that you want to cuddle up by the fire with like a big blanket and just read this. I gave this one a four stars. Four stars to me is like such a good book. I really enjoyed it. Not a new favorite, but still really enjoyed it and would recommend it. Going back to some romance, I read Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I rated this one five stars. Such a good book, but honestly, I don't even remember reading this. I know I read it. How does this end? Okay, okay. I read several Colleen Hoover books this year, um, and 
they've kind of blended together in my head. The ending to this book was not as sad as I thought it was gonna be, but still, like, ugh, it got me. Tate, she comes to live with her brother, I believe. Yes, she comes to live with her brother, and when she gets to her brother's apartment, he's not there, but this guy, Miles, shows up. And they start off it's an, as enemies. This is an enemies to lovers book. Miles is pretty closed off emotionally, and you, as the book progresses and the relationship progresses, you learn more about Miles and his background and why he's so hesitant to ever fall in love again. Because he, um, at the start of the book, he swears never I would never fall in love again because someone absolutely wrecked this man. <laughs> this is unlike something I've ever read before. I think I read this book in like a day. I always fly through her books because they're just so, so good. Next, I started my Sally Rooney journey with Mr. Salary. I don't have too much to say about this. I think I gave this three stars. I did enjoy it. It's just a short story, but I literally couldn't even tell you what it's about because like there just like wasn't enough. I don't know, like I just don't read short stories. So it's hard for me like to rate it and talk about it when I'm not really familiar with the genre. It was a good story and I just wish that it was a full length novel because I just wanted to dive into it more. I think this is a really good introduction to Sally Rooney's writing style because she does write a little bit differently than other authors. She doesn't put quotation marks when people are talking which can be sometimes a little bit confusing if you're not like in that mindset to read Sally Rooney. In December I had watched Dash and Lily which is a show on Netflix so I decided to read the book. Super fun, super cute romance book. This book follows Dash and Lily as they go on an adventure because of this notebook. Lily is bored on winter break and she decides to hide this notebook in, well, in her favorite bookstore and Dash comes upon it. And in this notebook, it's clues, and whoever can figure out the clues will get to meet Lily, essentially. Definitely a grumpy versus sunshine kind of enemies to lovers. I love Dash character. He's so sarcastic and a little bit cynical. Lily was like, it was a little bit much for me, a little too happy and peppy. And it's also written by two authors, which I thought was really cool because you got, really got two different voices for each character. This one, four out of five stars. Then I read Normal People, which is a book that I think everybody needs to read. Just as the name says, it's just about normal people and how we make friends, grow up with people, sometimes grow apart from people, what happens when we go through different phases. And I just thought it was such a beautiful story of friendship and love and coming of age. I, yeah, I just loved everything about this book. And this was the first book that I started to underline in. I didn't tab it, but I have a few pencil write marks in here just to note my thoughts and things like that. So I don't know. There's just something so special about this book, especially reading it at my age. Like I'm 18, I'm in college, and I feel like I could really identify with the characters in this book. So if you're my age or know someone who is, maybe this would be a good one for you or a friend to read because, I don't know, there's just something very comforting about reading a story about people who are kind of going through the same things that you are. Next book that I read was an ARC book, which if you don't know what that means, it's an advanced reader's copy and that was The Little Library on Cherry Lane by Katie Ginger. This book, I loved it so, so much. It's about this librarian whose name's Elsie. She lives in the cutest little cottage in this fun, adorable little town in the middle of like the English countryside, which like the setting, 10 out of 10. So one day, this guy, main guy, he comes into town and he's from the big city of London and he comes to the library to let them know that the library is going to be torn down because they need to build affordable housing. People want to live in the quaint life but it's too expensive so he's trying to make sure that people have access to housing here but that means Elsie's adored library has to be torn down. This book is certainly an enemies to lovers and it was just everything that I needed to read. It's so fun. It was just so cozy and comforting and just like I don't want to keep saying that books are like fun and cute, but it just was like a fun and cute book to read. It's my first book that I read by Katie Ginger and I'm so excited to read all of her other books because I believe that they all take place in like a similar setting. Uh, the town is called Meadow Lane, I believe, yeah, and I really want to read all of her other stuff. <laughs> Such a I just love that book so much and I gave it a five stars. Another five star book that I read was Akamath, which is the second book in the Akatar series. I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't have that many thoughts on it, but it was good. I will say I don't think I have the same connection to Akatar that a lot of my other friends do. As much as I enjoyed it, like it wasn't 
revolutionary. I just feel like the characters just don't really speak to me in the same way that other people feel that connection, if that makes sense. Doesn't mean I didn't like it. I still gave it a five stars. I thought it was a really good book, but I didn't find it as memorable as I thought I was going to. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm definitely going to read the rest of the series because I'm excited to know what happens with the characters, and I think I'm going to like the next book better than I did this one. I know it's kind of controversial. I apologize, but that's just how I honestly felt about it. So we have made it through January, and now we're going to go through what I read in February. Moving on to February books, we have a few. First up, this book is so random and has nothing to do with anything else that I've been talking about, but this is a little book of Ayurveda. If you're not familiar with Ayurveda, it's an ancient form of holistic medicine from India, and I don't know what it is about it, but it's so fascinating. I love to learn about holistic medication and like it's just like Eastern medicine. So this is a fun little book. It's very bite-sized. It's got good illustrations and just kind of walks you through a good in like an introduction into Ayurveda and how you can apply it to your daily life. It talks about mindfulness and I think I gave this a four out of five stars. Random. I think this is the only nonfiction book I've read this year. <laughs> Next, Cinder by Marissa Myers. I had to read this for my English class because we're studying adaptations and this is obviously an adaptation of Cinderella. I enjoyed this one actually a lot more than I thought I was going to. I rated this four out of five stars. I thought I was going to like it more. I just couldn't quite get behind the cyborg thing. I don't know, like that just like, it's it felt more sci-fi than fantasy for me and I'm not a big sci-fi person so I think that just like, just didn't quite, quite sit right with me but especially for having to read this for an English class, I thought it was really good and I mean, I, I would totally finish the series because I wanna know what's gonna happen. Okay, this next book, pretty much like my favorite book now, which is a really big statement for me to make but Oh, it was so good. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know I can't I just talk about this book non-stop. And that's Six of Crows. I love it so much. Ah, uh, there's just something about the characters, especially Kaz. If you, once again, if you're familiar with my Instagram, we all know that I'm a Kaz girl. So we have six main characters. I'll read the back. There's a convict with a thirst for revenge, a sharpshooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged past, a spy known as the Wraith, a heart trender using her magic to survive the slums and a thief with the grift with a gift for unlikely escapes. Yeah. So we have six main characters and they all band together to go on this impossible heist to break this man out of jail in order to get what is it like four thousand four million dollars or something like that. I forget what the name of their money is in this world. All each character has their own backstory and they just all mesh together so well and their personalities clash, but they also just like fit it's just perfection. Like, this is fantasy perfection to me. Um, and I actually read this as like a little book club book, a buddy read. We read this all together in February and it was fantastic. I don't think I would have picked it up unless I had read it with my friends and I'm so happy that they suggested it because new favorite book. <laughs> Clearly a five star book. Another five star book, once again, by my absolute favorite, Lee Bardugo. This is Ninth House and this was unlike something I've ever read before. This is a dark academia book. Alex attends Yale and somehow she gets roped into this dark magic club, I guess, or cult. Call it a club, but it's a cult. And she discovers that there's these drugs that are being used and it's connected to a murder and she embarks to solve this murder herself because her mentor, Darlington, has been sucked into like a sixth dimension. So while this murder is trying to be solved, she's also trying to figure out how she can get Darlington back into their correct dimension. It's an insane book. So yeah, if you like dark academia books, books with secret societies and dark magic, different dimensions, stuff like that, oh my gosh, I definitely recommend this. And today, Lee Bardugo announced the secret Cool. I cannot wait because this book left off in such a big cliffhanger. I need to know what's going to happen ASAP. Then after that, I read The Golden Couple, which I got from Book of the Month. I recently signed up for Book of the Month, so very excited to be building my Book of the Month bookshelf this year. Avery is the therapist, but she's a therapist who's kind of gone rogue in a way. She has a very specific 10 session solution for everyone's problem. And they come in, Session one 
it's all illustrated out. She has a perfect outline for how to get people to the end goal of like being okay. So essentially, this couple comes in, they're Marissa and Matthew Bishop, and they are the golden couple. They're rich, they have one son, they look like they have this perfect marriage, but there are some things going on that is not okay. Marissa has been unfaithful in the marriage and that is why they are in marriage counseling with Avery. It was very cohesive. This book also takes place from everyone's perspective. So you get Avery's perspective, Matthew's perspective, and Marissa's perspective. I gave this one a five stars because it just took such a twist and a turn that I did not see coming. And for a mystery one, it was such a good book. This is also written by two authors and I just thought that it was such a fun thing. I don't know. It just is so exciting when there's more than one author telling a story. Oh, I did not predict how this book was going to end and I love it when that happens. Next book that I read this year was Heard It in a Love Song by Tracy Garvis Graves and I initially picked this book up because I thought it looked a lot like Daisy Jones and the Six and as I mentioned earlier I loved Daisy Jones and the Six. It also has a review by Taylor Jenkins Reid which I was like okay I have to read this. Honestly I gave this book two stars. Like it just wasn't for me. It's about this teacher who, she's a music teacher and then she ends up falling in love with one of her students' dads. I don't know. It was just like, like the story was fine. It just like it didn't do anything for me. It just was a book that I read. Okay, my camera kind of crashed, but I think we're back. The next book that I read was The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. And honestly, I didn't like it. My main reason for not really liking this book is both mostly because it was just slow and I feel like things didn't actually happen until like the last five chapters of the book, which was fine. Like it was fine. For a mystery book though, I personally want something going throughout the book and it just wasn't for me. I rated this book two stars, which I feel really bad about because I know people like it and I was so excited to read it because I thought that the plot was such a good idea, but I don't know. I don't know. The ending was fantastic though, like a five star ending for the last like three to five chapters. Fantastic. But the rest of the book just like, just didn't do it for me. However, I liked her writing style and I've heard that the guest list is so much better and not quite as slow. So I will definitely be checking out more of her books in the future. This is not going to stop me from reading her other books, but this one just wasn't for me. Then we are getting into what I read in March. Another stack. <laughs> So I read the whole series, the Grisha series. I'm kind of reading it out of order since I read Six of Crows first, but personally I don't think that you need to have read these three books in order to get to Six of Crows. I mean it does definitely help to know the world, but I don't think it's that important necessarily. Anyways, so first we have Shadow and Bone. So I rated this book four stars. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. This was actually a reread because I originally read this like in 2020 or 2021. I don't remember. I enjoyed it. Like I don't have that many thoughts about it one way or another. It was just once again like a good book that I read. Then I read Siege and Storm and this one was a total five stars. This is my absolute favorite from the series. Such a good book. I love Nikolai. When there's a character that I just absolutely love, it makes me love the book so much more. And I don't know, his character is just so fun, super witty and sarcastic and I feel like he just added another element that I was missing from the first book which is why I love this one. And then Ruin and Rising. This was my least favorite in the series. I thought it was a little bit boring honestly just until the end. The last few chapters were so good and things just like wrapped up together really nicely and it was a very satisfying ending and I really liked it. I rated this one three stars because the rest of the book just wasn't my favorite. There was just there was so much lead up to what was gonna happen that I was just like, it's just like a little bit overkill in the lead up for me. I felt like it could have been condensed, but those are just my thoughts. People like this book a lot, so that's just, just my own humble opinion. So that's the Grisha series. Overall, I would definitely recommend this, especially if you're new to fantasy books. I think this is a great place to get introduced to fantasy. They're pretty easy to read. It's a YA series and really overall enjoyable. Then my friend Kayla, who's also on Instagram, I'll put her Instagram down below or something here. Uh, she told me to read Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. This book was so, so good. It's a five star 
I could give it six stars. The review on the back says this book will break your heart open in the best way and that's exactly how I feel about this book. So the main character Betty Carpenter, she is born in 1954 and she, her dad is Cherokee Indian and her mom is white and they live in Ohio. So as someone also who's mixed, I thought it was really cool to have a mixed race character as the main protagonist and it's just such a fascinating look also into what it was like to be a female growing up in like the later 50s and 60s. Look, please look up the trigger warnings for this book because there's a lot of stuff that happens that I didn't expect but I really appreciate the author for writing about this because I think that this book covers really important topics about growing up as a woman in this time period and also dealing with issues with race and also domestic violence. This book also covers really interesting topics of writing mental health and how it was treated during this time period too. As, like, as much as I recommend this book, I, it does deal with really difficult and heavy topics so if you're not into that or don't think that you can handle it, like don't, don't read it, but it's such a beautiful story in the most heartbreaking way. Then I read a play. This was a once again for my English course, but I wanted to count it because I did read it. It's a book that I read and just because it was school doesn't mean it doesn't count. So we read Anna in the Tropics and I didn't, I don't have many thoughts about this. I don't really like plays, like reading them. I love watching theater, but I'm not a big fan of reading plays. It was fine. I didn't really rate it because it was an assignment, so I didn't have a choice to read it or not. Then I read Gallant by V.E. Schwab. My friend had recommended this to me and I was slightly hesitant to read it because I didn't like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue that much, but I'm not against giving authors second chances, so I decided to read Gallant by V.E. Schwab. It's a YA fantasy and this one was so much better to me than The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This one is also in like her traditional writing. It's kind of slow and like didn't really get to the plot that quickly, which I like a fast-paced book. However, I don't know, something about this, like, it was still interesting all the way through. And the ending of this book was just so sad. I read a review on Goodreads that was saying it's a cross between Coraline and The Secret Garden. I've never read Coraline, but from what I know about it, I would say that that's 100% true. It's like a very dark version of The Secret Garden. Main character... Olivia. Olivia Pryor. She is... I, she's been told that she is an orphan essentially and that she has no other family left but randomly she gets a letter from her uncle saying we finally found you. We've been looking for you for years. Come live with us at the house. Gallant. And Olivia, I don't... I believe she... she's mute. I believe. That wasn't like an interesting character trait that she has when it comes to her communication with her family because most of them don't know sign language and I thought it was really cool that V.E. Schwab featured a character who can only speak through sign language and writing. So she arrives at Gallant and it's this beautiful manor in like the middle of nowhere and suddenly she finds herself alone and discovers that her uncle who sent the letter is dead and so she's like who sent this letter? And I feel like we don't exactly figure that out. I don't know when the letter was sent, what the timeline was between the letter was, when the letter was sent and when her uncle died. That kind of confused me. Anyway, she ends up living with her family that has now like randomly showed up. And this family lives in Gallant and there is a big wall that's like randomly in the middle of this field next to the house. And it's crumbling and falling apart. This wall acts as the divider between this world and the afterworld. So Olivia gets curious and she starts to investigate the wall and then things get exciting. <laughs> I think I gave this one a four stars. It was good but a little bit slower than books I typically enjoy which is why I didn't give it a five star. I think it was if it was a little bit quicker paced I would have given it a five star review but overall really liked it and I actually have another V.E. Schwab book. That I'm excited to read it. I think it's called The Good Witch or I think this book is changing my opinion on the e. Schwab's books. We have two more to go I think. I'm getting tired. I've been filming for a while. This book I think everybody needs to read. This is The Grace Year by Kim Lickett and this was recommended not personally to me but the Common Room, if you're familiar with her Instagram page, Hallie recommends this book all the time and it is such a good book and I totally know why she's recommending it. 
So this book follows Tyranny, I think that's how you pronounce her name, Tyranny James. She's the main character and this in this dystopian world, the way I describe this book, it's like Hunger Games, Lord of the Flies with women, the Selection series, and what else was it? And The Giver, all combined together into one book. So I read this book probably in like two or three days and I would just sit down for hours and just read it and I just didn't realize that like three hours had gone by. Oh my gosh, books like that are just insane. So this is another YA fantasy. It's called The Gracier, and The Gracier in this world is when all the girls from this county, they're basically banished to the woods. It's with extremely limited supplies, and they have to survive for a year, essentially to release their magic, which is supposed to make them pure for marriage when they get back. It was kind of... it's a very interesting concept, and I don't want to spoil it, and it's really hard to talk about this book without spoiling it, but I loved it so so much and I gave this one a five star review. It was such an interesting look into what it is like to be a female and like what society kind of tells us to do. This book was <laughs> absolutely insane but it was also a really good look into like society and even though this takes place in like a dystopian fantasy world I think a lot of the ideas that were discussed in this book like they just happen like that's just part of the experience of being like a woman. I thought that this was a really important book too. And there's also a nice, healthy, underlining story of romance. Everything about this book was so good. I do kind of wish that the romance was a little bit more discussed because I really like that part of it. But it was kind of like a, here you go, here's like a little bit towards the end of the book. I want everybody to read this book. If there's one book that you go out to buy after watching this video, I hope it's this one. I read another book on my Kindle, which was The Girl and the with the Whispering Shadow, which is the second book in the Croswald series. It was once again sent to me by the publisher, so thank you so much. Uh, I really loved that one as well. I don't have too many thoughts on it. Basically my thoughts are the same that I had on the first book. Super fun, a really, really good way to just escape for a bit. If you're just like needing something to take you to a different world, 10 out of 10 recommend this book and the series as a whole. And we're on the last book I've been talking for so long. The last book that I read this year so far has been The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. My friend Olivia aka at the legal reads on Instagram she recommended this book to me and it was so fun to have a friend to discuss this with because I'd be like oh my gosh this just happened and this just happened. This is definitely one of my favorite romance books I think. We got some nice tabs. This book was just so fun. I'm obsessed with Adam. I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5 because I don't know why. I just didn't quite feel like a 5 star book but still such a good one and I would totally recommend this. If you want just like a fun romance book to read, 10 out of 10 recommend this book. It's so cute, really nerdy, and as someone I had considered studying science and I've done several internships with City of Hope um, and it was really fun reading this and be like, oh my gosh, I actually know what they're talking about. Something fun and really cool that Allie Hazelwood wrote about women in STEM. I appreciated that. Something about the fake dating trope just like speaks to me and I just love that trope. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just so fun how you just like watch these characters who don't even know each other suddenly fall in love. Ugh. I just love it. So those are my thoughts on the love hypothesis. So those are all the books that I have read so far in 2022. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope that you guys got some kind of recommendation or something like that. Maybe this inspired you to read, that'd be incredible. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more book videos, vlogs, all that fun stuff. You can click the little subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave a comment down below. What was your favorite book that you've read so far this year? I would love to know and also follow me on Instagram and Goodreads. All my links will be linked in the description like always. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Goodbye everyone.